Hello everybody, it's a new day, a new video. In today's episode, we will work on the inventory system. But first, we have to set up the UI. Here we go. Before we start doing the UI, we need some assets. So I went online and I got these assets, which you can find in the description below. Simply just open the link, sign into your Unity account, and click on Add to my assets. Then afterwards, open Unity, go to the Package Manager, make sure to have my assets selected, and then just write the name of the asset in here, which is fantasy something, and you will find it in here, one of these stuff. So this is the one that I have. All you have to do is click download and then import, and it will be inside your project. So we've downloaded the assets. Let's start creating the UI. Just like any elements in the UI, we need something called canvas. So first of all, let's create UI and canvas. I'm going to call it UI, that's it. And we have to make sure that we have the scale mode set up to scale with screen size. In most of the games that you, you want to make on PC, you would go with this size of 16 by 10 or 16 by 9. But I like the 16 by 9 more. Since you selected the 16 by 9, you want to make sure that the reference resolution is set up more or less exactly like the same ratio. And a one good hint on how to make this proper is by looking at the actual UI element in direct transform you will see width and height so it's 800 by 450 because 16 by 9 is basically you divide 16 by 9 and then you get 1.77777777 okay so uh, we put for 15 here 50 yep and in the match you make sure that it's 0.5 which is basically in the middle so whenever you want to resize any kind of UI it will resize proportionally both in the width and height the next thing we want to do is we want to create the canvas for the inventory let's go into the UI right click and create an empty game object let's call it inventory panel we should leave the game scene and go back to the scene view zoom out and we'll see that this is our UI canvas whereas this is our inventory we want the inventory basically to be at the bottom somewhere like here takes like 80% of the size so let's start doing this by using anchors anchors are the setting points of every UI element for example the UI has an anchors full of the screen so what that means is it's basically taking the x0, x1, y0, y1 so it's stretching to the full screen whereas this element has the anchors of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and they're indicated in these small ticks in here so every element has anchors and you can see that if I choose this bottom left one which is the x minimum and start playing with it you will see that the x minimum is changing and then if I start to go in the vertical the y minimum also changes you can play with the anchors manually which is not a problem like you can go ahead and then say okay I want the UI of the inventory to be from here until here and at this height it's all okay you can do it but since I like fixed numbers I would go ahead and make this one for example point two and this point eight this is zero and then point fifteen and before we actually do anything you'll see that this forms some sort of a rectangle that will fill our UI inventory but again you only set up the anchors you have to set up the actual left right up and bottom which is basically the size or the width and the height of the UI element and to do this after setting up the anchor just make sure that all of these are zeroed out or if you're not that familiar with these stuff you can go ahead and click this rec tool and make sure that the bottom left is matching the bottom left and the same thing with the bottom right top left and top right and you'll see that it will exactly go to zero zero this is just too small number but it's it means zero but I prefer going ahead and just go zero 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 and you're done so we've set up the actual layout which is amazing let's go ahead and make a testing image create an image 
and then stretch it fully to this size here. So this will be our background panel. You will see that it does stretch but the anchors are not set properly so we will make sure that the anchors are properly. And one of the easy ways of doing this stuff we have a lot of presets. Just go to the icon this here click on it and you'll see all of these stuff so we have stuff anchored to the left right top and the bottom also we got something called stretch our panel is gonna be fully stretched right so what we're gonna do we're gonna have to choose this one here so as soon as I click this one you will notice that the the anchors will set up properly here we go but again since we set up the size manually it looks fine but let's control Z the size and set up the anchors. If I set it right now, it's not going to resize. One of the easy tricks is it says here hold alt to set the position. So what's going to do, it's going to set the anchors and the position as well. This is a good way of using the UI. Let's rename this to panel. Or let's call it background. You know what? I'm going to go with panel. Inside the assets that we've got, there's one nice asset that I liked a lot is this one where is it stage yep that's it you'll see that it doesn't look really good it's a bit stretched which is fine um, you probably have set up a specific uh, UI for this one but again if you don't see that if you don't feel like this one is really good all you have to do is just play with the inventory panel anchors let's say it needs to be higher let's increase the height 2.2 and then either drag this upwards or just make sure that the top is zero. I think this looks way much better. So we've set up the panel, now we have to set up the item slots. So in every inventory system you will get several slots in here that you can have items inside of them or click on them to equip or use etc. Let's start by adding a new image. What we're going to do is the image will ha will house the actual slot size and then inside of it we will have the item image which will be clickable. Let's call it um, inventory uh, inventory slot 1. Brilliant. And one of the items that I found in here is you can get this one which is nice but I like this one more. Again, you might have your own elements. Feel free to use them. I haven't set this up. Here we go. So we've set up this thing. Let's make sure that the sizes fit inside. Let's go 70, 70. It flushes almost 60. Now it's too small. I'll go with 70, right? It looks good. Let's create another image inside. This will become the actual item. Let's go ahead and look if we have anything. Here we go. Let's use this one. It doesn't look good. We have to contain this image inside the inventory slot. To do this, we'll do the same thing. We'll open this the anchor preset, choose the stretch, and then it will fit fully inside its parent. But you'll notice because our parent inventory slot is a circular so there's a chance that some of the items will go outside for example this one right what we're gonna do is we will resize the um, the edges make them go inside more and to do this we have to change the values of left right bottom and top let's increase this by 10 10 10 10 You'll see it still looks a bit off, so we will make it probably 15, 15, 15 by 15. I think that's good enough. We'll stick with 15. But the second thing you need to make sure is you click on preserved aspect ratio. And you say why? Because you might have items that is wider and some of them will be taller. For example, let's go ahead and see, click this element, right? So you will see that it's being stretched vertically which is not a good thing so if we click on preserve aspect ratio it will stay inside the area but will remain its own ratio that is amazing let's click on this thing again keep the preserved and have this image let's call it item and let's add something called 
button. So this is going to be the actual interactor that we're going to use to interact with the scripts that we're going to build. But I'm going to keep this disabled because we will take care of the UI for this episode. So if we've built the slot with its elements, we need to sort them out. So how to put them in a proper size and distance from each other? You might go ahead and say, well, let's con let's copy and paste this one by creating control D and then let's move this here and move this here and this here and this here. I would say that's fine, but again, working with any UI elements, you need to make sure that the anchors or the positions, they're all properly set because you might have different screen resolutions and different screen resolutions. That means things will stretch in a different way or position in the wrong way. This happens mostly in mobile games, mainly on the portrait screens, but it's a good practice to do it on all screens. Since we've created four, we can see that four is a good amount of slots. So let's go back to the panel. And inside the panel, we will have to create something called layout group. What, what it does, it organizes all the stuff inside the element to align according to our uh, axis. So we're going to go ahead and call layout and choose horizontal. The second you add this, you will see all the elements, they start to look different. Why? Because in the settings in here, you will see that we have something called child alignment. What this does, it sets the first second until the end of the children. And when I say children, I mean the UI elements according to this value. So it says upper left. So the first one will become here, anchored to the top left, next one here, and etc. In our case, we needed everything to be in the middle and in the center. So we'll go ahead and look for middle center. So if you want to try ahead, let's go ahead middle left. So it will put them in the middle, but they'll start from the left to the right. We will want them to start from the inside out. So if you disable this one, you will see that they will align according to that alignment. So we fixed the alignment. The next thing we have to do is fix the padding. What padding means is an extra buffer for sizes on the sides, whether up, down, left, or right, that pushes all the elements inside. So just like putting a cushion to avoid that element being there. For our case is we see that the panel is this big, but the actual UI graphics are up until here. So we want to make sure that we're going to push everything on the left side inwards and the same thing from the right side inwards. This will be done through the padding. If we use the padding and start increasing, you will see that it's going to go inside bit by bit. And if I'm not mistaken, I guess 50 is a good value. We will apply the same value to the right as well. Let's go 50. And if we go back to the game view, we'll see that they are aligned properly. Again, you can have it bigger according to your own taste. Also, the sizes, you can play with them however you want. Uh, there are some other features in the layout group which we don't have to tackle right now, but I'm going to explain some of them. For example, child force expand it's ticked by default. What this does, it, it makes sure that all the elements, they are aligned in a way that fits all the canvas. And what that means is, for example, we have four elements, right? So four is basically four quarters. So this will fill 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. That what this does. And if we reset everything to zero, you will see that exactly what happens because everybody is aligned as it is. But if you disable it, it will not stretch them to fit the whole canvas, which can be used for different kind of reasons. So you can use it this way and then play with something called the spacing. And the spacing will increase the size between the elements. So it has a different range of things that you can use, but I'm going to keep using the child force expand because I want it to actually fit the whole thing and then add the padding on the sides. So this is set up. I will make sure that the namings are set up properly and then we'll go back to the game view and we'll look at it it looks perfect so this will be used as 
the UI elements for our inventory system, which we will be working on in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like and subscribe. And if you got any questions, hit the comments below or join our Discord channel, which is in the description below. And last but not least, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.